Hi, this is Dr. J. In this video, I want to show you the parts of the thin section cutoff saw. This saw is used to cut the rock uh, chip that you use to make the thin section with. In this case, you will have already glued your rock to the slide like this, and this instrument is used to cut off most of this rock chip so that you have a very thin slice of rock left over. Um, the parts of the saw are pretty straightforward. Like the other saws that we use in our geologic laboratories, we have a diamond saw here. You can see it's smaller than the big rock saw we use to cut larger rock samples apart, but it's the same type where it has diamonds um, embedded into the edge of the saw. There's a motor here that turns the saw around and around. Okay. There's also uh, water supply, so just like our other saws, we need a lubricant, and so we have a tube in here that actually brings water and makes it in contact with the rock saw surface. The main part of this is the sample holder, and we're going to put our sample right here and adhere it to the sample holder with a vacuum by using this lever right here, and you push it forward and then cut your sample on the saw like this. Now, to figure out, actually, because some samples you'll want to have closer or farther away, um, because you'll want to adjust this depending on how thick your sample is, okay, we also have a different adjustment on this arm, and that's usually down here somewhere, and in ours it's this thing that looks like a little knob, um, and you rotate this back and forth to move this whole arm this way horizontally so that your sample can get closer or farther away from the rock saw. So when you use this, that's the first thing to do is to see how close you want to be to the rock saw before you start cutting. So you'll put your sample on there and push it up close to the rock saw with it off and see if it's aiming for the rock, you don't want to cut into the glass slide, obviously, aiming for the rock, but also very close to the slide because you want to cut most of the rock off. Otherwise, you have to polish or grind it away by hand. So this is sort of a, it's used to save yourself the trouble of having to grind through all of this manually. You want to cut as much of this off as possible. And those are really the main parts of the saw. The other system is the vacuum system, and that is what keeps the slide attached to this handle. For both the cutoff saw and the thin section grinder, the way that you hold your sample on the machine so that you can cut or grind your sample is with a vacuum system. And so if you look at this sample holder right now um, kind of closely, you can see hopefully there are many holes in it. And these holes actually lead uh, through the machine into this tube right here. And this tube is attached to a vacuum pump. And so basically we're going to keep our sample attached to the uh, machine through suction. And to do this, um, it's not terribly difficult. You have to remember that suction works best when the sample is wet. So you want to make sure that the back of your thin section glass is wet. Um, for our specific instruments, these, both of these instruments are hooked to the same vacuum system, so we need to have both sample holders covered by a glass slide. This one and the other one must both be covered, otherwise the vacuum doesn't work because there would be a hole on one side or the other if they're not both covered. So you just have to remember that for our specific system. And then this one, here's the vacuum tube going from the cutoff saw, here's the vacuum tube going from the cutter, and they both come into this set of flasks. These flasks are basically to prevent water from getting into the pump. So we have this flask attached with a tube to this flask, and these catch the water coming off of the saw um, and your sample to prevent them from um, just having a whole bunch of water go into the pump. And then this tube finally goes into the vacuum pump over there. 
This is a roughing pump, so it can handle a lot. Um, we can abuse it. Um, best practices, though, are always to turn the pump off before you vent it, meaning before you try to take your samples off, you want to turn the pump off. And that keeps it from just sucking raw air into it. And eventually, some pumps don't handle that very well, but this one can kind of handle it for a little bit. So to, to keep your sample attached, really, with the setup, all you have to do is turn on the vacuum pump. And then the suction will work to keep your sample attached to this jig. If you can move your slide around, that means that the vacuum suction is not working and you need to figure out what's wrong before you start to cut your sample because if it's not attached well, then it will fall off while you're trying to cut or grind the sample and that doesn't usually end very well. So that's a good way of checking. And if it is loose, you may want to check the back of your thin section slide because a lot of times the problem is that there's either some grit or material here that's keeping the surface from being flat or else you actually have glue or some other imperfection on the back of your slide that's keeping it from making uh, good flat contact and it's preventing the vacuum from making complete suction there.